session. I'm so glad that you're all here. Thanks for joining us uh, for a webinar that's entitled, and you probably know this, uh, at least you did when you signed up, uh, The Future of Leadership, What's Next for Leaders in a Distributed World of Work. And uh, so we're going to do something that's very difficult to do, which is to look into the future. So what the question is, what will leading be like in the future? Well, I don't know exactly what the future holds. I can be pretty confident that all of these things will be true. That leading will be more difficult than it is now, that it will there will be more change, that it will definitely be more distributed, that it will probably be different, that it will likely require us to be more flexible, and it's almost assuredly uncertain. And so it's in that perspective with that perspective as a starting point that we will dive in. And uh, as I always do, you know, if I'm creating a webinar or a session for a client, I have some sense of who's in the audience. If it's a keynote, if it's a webinar, if it's a virtual session, if it's an in-person session, I have some idea of who is there. But when I do these, I don't always know. So I always like to start by saying, who do I, who did I build this for? And uh, I'm going to hope and believe that all of you who are here, whether it's live or later, whether it's on uh, Zoom or it's on LinkedIn Live, fit into one of these buckets. That, that this is who I built this for, right? If, whether you're in HR, OD, or training, or if you're in line management, whether at the highest levels of the organization, whether you're at any level of leadership in the organization, and whether you're thinking about this organizationally, this idea of being a more effective leader in the future of work, or whether you're doing it for yourself, just wanting to get better for yourself, that's really why we're here. And and I believe that you're in one of those buckets. I believe that you are. And I ultimately believe that you're here because you care about the success and effectiveness of your organization or of organizations. And you know that leaders are a part of the solution. And so it's with that context that we're going to do the session. That's that's who I, I think I'm talking to. And I believe that we are all singing on this uh, on this uh, song sheet right here. I, I know that I certainly am. So uh, let's talk a little bit about me. If you don't know who I am, I certainly recognize some folks here, but I know I don't know everybody. And uh, so why me? Well, I, I've done a bunch of writing and some of it's uh, worth noting uh, all of this three books up there and what, what we now call the long distance work life series, which certainly connects to this idea of distributed workplace. We're going to definitely be talking about that today. So I've done a lot of writing. I've done a lot of uh, instructing. I've worked with leaders from uh, all over the world. Last time I counted something like 54 countries. And so hopefully I, I bring a perspective that's useful, but beyond that, uh, second to the bottom bullet, uh, I lead a team every day. So I'm, I'm, in this, I'm in this game with you, uh, trying to do my best to lead our team every day, just like I know you're trying to do as well. So hopefully the combination of those experiences that I bring make this especially useful and helpful. And just a couple of things that others have said about me, I won't dwell long here, but um, we're fortunate to have had lots of lots of great clients who uh, many of whom have said some really nice stuff about me. And so if you didn't know me before, now you know a little bit of something. And so let's dive in. Uh, these next four bullets are both basically what you saw when you registered as to why your, why you came. You came to get these promises met, that we're going to talk about why the future requires us to lead differently. We're going to talk about the context of work now and in the future, although I've hinted at that a little bit. We're going to say more about that. Um, we're going to talk about what leaders can do today. So bullet number three is something very tangibly, very tangible that you can take away from this and go do something with this afternoon or tomorrow or soon. And then we'll talk about how you can help to build these competencies, these skills, uh, build on these perspectives across your organization for yourself into the future. So that's where we're headed is sort of the future, bringing it back to today, being very tangible and practical with it all the way around. Okay, so that's where we're headed. And let me just say this, as I go along, um, if you have questions, put them in the chat. There may be times I ask a question of you in the chat. And again, for those of you that might be watching on LinkedIn, uh, know that someone on our team is monitoring there and we'll bring those questions and those comments yeah. back over to me so I can see them. Uh, 
But if you've got questions, share them. If you've got comments, offer them, because here's the thing, you're not the only one that has them. So please do share those as we go. The, mo the more that we can make this interactive, the better it is for all of us. Okay, that's where we're trying to go today. So let's do it. So what does the future look like? Well, um, again, the dangerous thing to try to do. And so what I'm not going to do is tell you super specifically what's going to happen on what date, on what in what year in the future. But I can say with good confidence the three things I'm going to share with you here. Number one is that the context of our work is continuing to change. Has and will continue to. Uh, meaning things like there's a more diverse, excuse me, a more diverse workplace. We work in, in a variety of places. We're, what we call a place that we could work could look quite different than it did in the past. And that will continue to change. Uh, there will be a more diverse workforce in terms of what our backgrounds are, where we're from, uh, what our perspectives are, uh, what our goals and desires are, more about that in a second. Uh, and there'll be more variety in the work without question, uh, more variety in the ways that we get there. And as I was thinking about this in my final preparation in the last couple of days, I, uh, you can see by my hair that I'm not that young. And so here, here's what I can remember. There was a time when uh, if you wanted to watch Cheers, you watched it on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to watch Friends, you watched it on Thursday night. It was actually a, a set, set of things on NBC called Must See TV. It was Thursday night. And, and, and that's the way work used to be. Like we went to work at a certain time. We did work at a certain time. We did things together at that time. We all watched it together. But the world isn't like that now, right? Like the world is streaming now and it's going to be more like that. So if we take this as a metaphor, there's more and more, there'll be more and more streaming and less must see TV. In other words, the work will still need to get done. How, when, and and where we do it will be different. More streaming, less must see TV. So uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the future looks like a, a context a continually changing context. But that's not all that's changing. Expectations are also changing. Like the expectations that we all have about what work is will change, that we expect work to look differently. Um, when we want to work will be different. Even thinking about the word want in there, right? Uh, where we want to work is changing. How people want to see work fitting into their life that's yeah. a very different view yeah. than it was yeah. even five yeah. years okay. ago. Um, and, and that's not going to go back. We're going to put, put that genie back in the bottle to something like we used to have. You know what? Even though there's a lot about leadership that hasn't changed, there's something else that's also true. And that is that what people are looking for in their leaders is changing at least a little bit as well. And I'm going to mute some folks here just to make sure we're all on the same page. Here we go. Um, and beyond this, what we all, what people want from their work and their career, if I get my slides to move, here we go. Whoops. What people want from their work and career is also changing. So I'm making these comments here about individuals. I believe all these things are true for most individuals. It's also true sort of societally. It's true organizationally. And so not only is the context of work changing, but the what people expect from, look for in, all of that is different, different, right? Uh, yeah, Daniel says changing work-life balance, 100%, right? Like what that means, we could have a long conversation, Daniel, about that particular phrase and, and why I think it's sort of a bit of a misnomer. The point is, though, that the way people look at that's different than it used to be. Right. And Maria from El Salvador says those changes make it more difficult to retain talent. So if you're thinking about this for talent retention thing and think, think it's just you, guess what? It's not just you. And here's the thing. If we get this stuff right as leaders, in other words, if we figure out how to lead in this changing context and with these changing expectations, we can set ourselves apart in such a way, Maria, that we can actually be a talent magnet 
and and do a better job of retaining folks. But if we continue, and maybe this is the mic drop of the day, that if we continue to lead the way we always have, Maria's point about it making it different, excuse me, more difficult to retain talent will absolutely be true. So if we want to retain our talent, we have to recognize that context is changing, expectations are changing, we have to change with it, but it's not just this stuff, we also have more distributed work, right? So specifically now, not just what people expect from it, but where it's happening, how it's happening, when it's happening, all that stuff is true. So the reality is that if we don't, recognize that all these are true and we continue to lead the way we've led, then we're going to have all sorts of challenges, not the least of which is retaining the talent that we want and need. So if this is the future, then we as leaders must change. So this should be the clarion call. I don't think there's anything I said in any of these bullets that is hard to understand or even really all that controversial. And yet, we do, if we don't stop and think about it, then the reality is we can think, well, we can keep leading the way we have and be okay. And I would say probably not, because if the world's changing, the work is changing, the expectations of the work is changing, uh, in all of that shifting sand, we must change with it, right? So in our book, The Long Distance Leader, and I say our, it's Wayne Tremell and I, and Wayne is is in the in the chat here. Um, in our book, The Long Distance Leader, uh, we introduced a model that we call the 3-0 model of leadership that we believe is a really useful thing for us to consider. So think about, we believe that leadership is about reaching valuable outcomes with and through others and how we do it and who we are play a role in how successful are we are in reaching outcomes in others. Well, if the outcomes and the context is changing and the expectations of others are changing, then again, we must change, right? Uh, yes, and so the comment came in, it says, I noticed that the what, where, and how aspect of both the changing expectations of the people and more distributed work they work together, 100% true. So it's like they're layered on top of each other. Yes, so work is more distributed. And because of that, people have a new view of what work, what they want work to be and what it could be, and which further pushes, pulls us to new realities, 100% true, right? I'm glad that you noticed that they're both there, but they weren't exactly the same thing, which is sort of part of my point. So uh, I mentioned the book, The Long Distance Leader. You may or may not know that that book that was written before COVID uh, is about to be released as a second edition, an updated um, version of the book. Here's the new cover. And here are three of the rules that are in this book that you can see that the subtitle of the book is Revised Rules for Remarkable Remote and Hybrid Leadership. Uh, there were rules in the first edition. The rules remain in the second edition. A few of them updated. These three didn't change. They are the first three of the 19 rules. And I want to talk about them briefly because they're all very connected to what we've just been talking about. The first one is that rule number one is think about leadership first, location second. So it, here's the conundrum. I, I'm saying that we have to lead differently and yet we must think about leadership. Not everything about leadership has changed. We have to recognize what's the same and then we must realize the nuance of what we must do differently. It is this nuances that matter greatly. Uh, rule number two is accept the fact that leading remotely requires you to lead differently and keep learning. I'm going to say more about this one in a couple of minutes. And then the third of the 19 rules that it specifically applies to us today is to know that working remotely changes the interpersonal dynamics, even if we don't want it to. So Wayne and I would say that, and I, I will put words in Wayne's mouth now, uh, that We've worked with a lot of leaders in the past since COVID, who have sort of said, "Well, you know, we've got we're, we we've sort of things have settled down. It's all okay. You know, we're back in the office several days a week." And we would say that if you have one person remote, you still have a remote team. And so to think that everything's back to normal and we can kind of go back to the old way we led that worked okay before uh, in this new world is probably a little bit short-sighted. So in the in the opening, I said that that Wayne and I wrote several books uh, in this series called the Long Distance Work Life Series. Now, and another one of those 
books is called The Long Distance Teammate. I want to share a model that we created for that book as well. It's called the 3P model um, for remote work success. And I share this here, even though we're thinking about this as leaders, because as leaders, we're also teammates, right? And so we must be aware of and think about this fact, right? That being proactive is critical to our success. And the questions that we have always thought about as leaders and as team members uh, about one of the biggest biggest things we always think about is how do we get, how do we be, be more productive? How do we accomplish the things we want to accomplish? And Wayne has put the link into this book in the in the chat, if you want to take a look at that, uh, that that productivity matters and is different now. That that to be highly successful, we must be proactive and we must think about more than just today, but we must think about the future tomorrow. And that's in short what we would say around this idea of potential. Point I want to make is this, and the reason I share this is because not only is this world changing for your folks you're in there too. So sometimes we we tend to think as leaders about the team, but all of this stuff about the differences and even our view of work and the expectations that we have of work and the expectations we have of our, our team is also changing. So the context of the fact that even though you are a long distance leader, you're also a long distance teammate. And as a leader, you're likely on multiple teams, right? At a minimum. You're on the team of your peers as well as the team that you lead. So a little more context setting for you. And now what I'd like to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is to dive in to what I think are the five facts that we have to think about if we're going to develop leaders now. And as I said at the start, uh, you may be thinking about this with that your organizational hat on, thinking about the leaders in your organization this certainly applies there, but this may this also applies for you as an individual leader. That may be why you're here. So regardless, uh, this all applies. And uh, I'm kind of, Wayne hasn't seen all of these slides, although he certainly was involved in creating the description for this session. And I'm pretty confident he's going to love this first one. He might comment in the chat. You never know. Uh, that, Fact number one, just because you've been hybrid doesn't mean leaders now have everything that they need. What we found is a lot of organizations sort of settling in and feeling like, okay, we've gotten this figured out. It's sort of steady state again. And we're doing okay. Except we're really not doing okay because... We, we're having we're having talent retention challenges and we're having productivity challenges and we're having and we're having uh, some amount of dis, disrest and disillusionment and a bunch of and discouragement and we still have mental health issues and all that stuff. Um, uh, yeah, assuming that they know what hybrid is, that's fair, right? Uh, and will and will you and that's actually part of the challenge because everyone's version of what hybrid is isn't all the same, right? Which is another one of these things that's different. So you got people that join your organization and think, well, this is a hybrid workplace. What does that mean? Does that mean they go to, I need to go to the office once a week? Is that twice a week? Is it almost every day? Like, are they the set set, set of days? Like how we're all doing this isn't the same. That's why I put hybrid in quotes. And so whatever that looks like for you, the variations of that are many. The fact is, that um, we have to re realize that uh, leading remotely requires us to lead differently. We need to keep learning. And while there were some organizations that did some training for their remote or distance leaders or for distributed teams, sometime during uh, the lockdowns and the pandemic and all that stuff, they've sort of put that off to the side and it hasn't necessarily left us in a position where leaders are feeling the level of confidence and competence that they need to ultimately be successful, especially as the world continues to change. Now, the second fact about developing our leaders in this new world is that it's not all brand new, that some of the most important skills we've always needed are still the ones we need. Um, think about leadership first, location second. It's not all brand new. And yet, because leadership is a complex endeavor, we may not have all those principles figured out per perfectly or, or implementing them perfectly, perfectly as leaders either, right? 
And so whatever you're doing, fact number three, whatever you're doing, excuse me, in terms of developing your leaders, your training, your development, whatever that looks like, chances are you're not likely capturing everything that might be needed. And that's not a point, that's not meant to poke at anybody. It's just that if the world continues to change and we've built tr training and development efforts around some view of a steady state, th the odds are that what our leaders are going to need or are going to need might not be fully connected to the, the opportunities that we're giving people, right? Now, without question, I don't think this is going to be uh, controversial at all either, and that is that leaders have a big impact. That's a fact. And I would argue that perhaps when people are distributed and aren't uh, in physical proximity every day, that the, the way that we lead and the direction that we provide, the encouragement we provide, the big picture and perspective that we provide might leave us lead us to be more important now than we've ever been before. So the world is changing. We as leaders must change. And perhaps the role of a leader has never been more important than it is now. That to me is a clarion call to say, we're going to be thinking about what do we need to be doing now for ourselves, for the others in our organizations that we're leading. And, and I would suggest to you that as you're sitting there right now, you might be thinking about skills. Well, what are the skills, Kevin? And I would say it's more than just skills that every leader needs to think in this new world about their mindset, their skill set, and their habit set. Now, if you've been on webinars or in sessions with me before, you may have heard us talk about these three things before, mindset, skill set, habit set. But even if you have, it's important for us to think about this because far too often we we try to deliver skills to folks, but if they don't match up with what the way they see the world, then those skills are not going to be valued uh, and they likely won't be implemented. And of course, it's the habit set that is the implementation of the skill set. Just because I have a big toolkit uh, now and shiny new tools, new skills in my toolkit, if I don't apply them and use them, sort of what's the point, right? So every leader needs to think mindset, skill set, habit set in this new way of working, which means from a mindset perspective, it looks like this. That your leaders, you, we, must recognize there's a new reality of work. And we have we can't put our heads in the sand like an ostrich. We can't under uh, sell the, the nature of the difference. You know, sometimes we don't notice difference uh, until we step back, right? Because we're leading every day and, and it doesn't feel that different than yesterday. But if you step back and look at how different is your work as a leader from what it was pre-pandemic to during pandemic to now, you realize that the world of work is different and continuing to change. Uh, so the first thing is, as leaders, we have to recognize that this is that this is real. Then we have to have we have to know that we have a need to change. Like once we recognize that the world is changing, the work is changing, the reality of and context is changing, then we have, then, then we will develop a felt need to change. And recently I wrote a, a short newsletter piece that I talked about that we, we must be willing before we can be able, right? Th this is another way of thinking about, we got to get the, the mindset has to match the skill set or we won't take action. We have to realize that this need to change is real. Uh, we must see there's value in it. Uh, and then we'll be more open to thinking about how we've got to do this leadership thing differently. So we have to we have to get to being willing before we can get to being able. And we get to willing by recognizing there's a felt need to change. And the other thing here is it's really easy for us as humans to sort of throw up our hands and say, everything's changing. This is a lot that's different here. I, I just don't know here. And we have to recognize as leaders that the part of this that belongs to us, which is for us to be accountable first, which means us being willing to change first. And if we're not willing and able to do that, like if this isn't 
if this hasn't been set up and if this isn't clear to your leaders, then any training or development or uh, coaching that you want to do with them is not likely going to take, right? And if you notice, uh, if you were to step back right now and look at the first 25 minutes of this webinar, you can say that I've basically spent the first 25 minutes of this webinar setting the table for this for you, right? Before we get to what are the skills, and we could make a long list of skills. I'm just going to talk about three things this afternoon that I think are especially useful for us to consider. Uh, and those three things are personal proficiency, uh, the, the long distance skills, the distributed work skills, the skills of doing stuff at a distance from those we're leading, and then uh, a flexible approach to doing it. So I'm just going to talk about these three sort of big idea skills that are critical to our ability to lead in this new uncharted future of distributed work. And so the first of those is personal proficiency. And I I, I wrote a long time ago, um, oh, actually before I do this, let me just stop right here. So before I go any further, in fact, I'm actually gonna go back one more slide and just ask, because you all have been relatively quiet in the chat. Uh, so I'm just gonna stop and say comments, thoughts, Questions, anything before I go any further um, that you want me to address or that you want to mention or that you want us to talk about before I go further? I'll get back to the skill sets here in just a second. Um, but I want to give you a second to sort of reflect on anything, not just on this slide, but on anything up until now. Gary says, being willing before able includes seeking help to be more able, such as attending this webinar. So, so Gary, you're right. I, I sort of recognize that while I hope that everything that I've shared here has been useful and valuable, that at some level, I'm probably speaking to people who already get some of this. I also know that one of the reasons that I do a webinar like this is that even if you're already on board, I know that many of you are here thinking about how do I get others in my organization on board? And certainly we want to support you in doing that any way that we can. And one of the ways that we can do that is by giving you these kinds of experiences, right? Josh says, I think this is spot on without the mindset, the skills or the teaching of the skills becomes relatively meaningless, 100%, right? I mean, if you've ever in your life, and this isn't really an if, uh, there's been a time in your life that someone was trying to teach you something, whether it was in school or whether it was last week, or this morning, and in the back of your head are saying, why does this matter to me? You know exactly what Josh is saying, right? Like this mindset, skill set, habit set thing is not really rocket science uh, at the end of the day. The new work reality uh, equals driving to the office to join eight hours of remote meetings. And so, Jeffrey, I will comment on that to say that if that's what's happening in your organization, we need to think about this reality more. We're going to get there before we're done, I promise. Um, uh, more is on, on the way on that particular point. Um, Chris says, so now, now you're all coming in with your comments, which is awesome. Um, Cindy says, the idea of habit set. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, new creative remote team engagement is a key to retention. That's exactly right. So we, we're going to have to... Leadership first, location second, but we're going to have to lead differently because we are remote and those differences matter a whole lot. Ari Ariella, good to see you. Um, there's a difference between being held accountable versus being accountable. And I often like to say there's a difference between holding people accountable and helping them be accountable, right? So I'm in agreement with you on that. Um, uh, Rich says, we, we featured your book with our supervisors before, during the beginning of COVID, how drastically different will the revised version be? So the question about the second edition of the ver book versus the first edition, I think that's safe to say that it's about 25% new. There's some stuff that was in the first edition that's gone out to make room for some new stuff. There's a lot of stuff about the, the fact that the world has continued to change, uh, and yet it's not all new by any stretch. So hopefully that's helpful. Rich, uh, Cheryl says, how we think 
directly impacts how we feel, which creates how we behave. Skipping mindset is short-sighted and will fail. Agree with that 100%. Uh, in fact, here's the thing. Our mindset, our beliefs create our thoughts, which create our actions. And those are going to be in alignment, right? So, and then those actions will reinforce the top of that and we'll go back down through that, right? So um, Michelle says, I have a situation where I have some staff that work in the same city as the office and others that are 100% remote company policy. Is that anyone, anyone within five minutes, five miles of the office are required to be in the office two days a week? This causes resentment on the team. There's no doubt, doubt that, you know, I believe we're still in a, a, a bit of a painful for many transition to what the future of work will look like. And that's what many have done. Although the policy might not be exactly as that was just described. The reality is that um, we're going to have to try to continue to figure that out. And as leaders, we're going to have to help our teams deal with that. Um, if that's the reality that we're in. Uh, and Rob says, manage a team who is hands-on and have to be at work. However, they interact with hybrid or remote team, project team members. And there's a marked difference in the living and legacy work environment and embracing a new work culture. All of this is right on, right? Um, yeah, and Wayne's saying a little bit more about the new book, a bit more focused on hybrid work. Uh, and of course, the technology has changed as well as the expectations and all those other things. Uh, Rob says trust is a huge piece and people are agreeing with that. So, so now let's, let's get back and thank you for that. And you all can continue to share your thoughts and ideas, um, as I go. And so I, I hinted at these three skill sets, personal proficiency, long distance skills, long distance skills, uh, and a flexible approach. Let's talk about each of those just a little bit. Uh, here's the first one. And in one of my earlier books, I wrote a line, something along the lines of to be a better leader is to be a better human and vice versa. And so what I'm suggesting is if we're going to be even better, more better equipped, more confident leaders in the future, it's not just about leadership skills, it's about human skills, right? And so that means, uh, do we have the desire to get better? Do we have, uh, are we engaged in the work that we're doing? And so the leaders that have this desire will be more successful. The leaders that have a level of engagement are going to be more successful. Leaders that are more centered in themselves, more secure in themselves, more sure of themselves, more confident in themselves are going to be more successful and have some clarity, whoops, and have some clarity is also going to matter a lot. So I said earlier that leadership is about outcomes, others, and ourselves. And, and I'm suggesting that in order for us to do a better job of supporting outcomes and others, we have to become better versions of ourselves if we're going to lead more successfully. I believe that as is, as as is, as true as this has always been, that as leaders, the, the better the best leaders are more self-aware as true as that's always been, that will be more true in the future than in the past. And so one of the things that we need to be doing as leaders, and we need to be helping our organizational uh, leaders in our organization do is be better, be, be more personally proficient, be, be better prepared, enabled, ready to deal with the change that is coming and will continue to come. So the second of the skills are what we'll call the long distance skills. It's the nuanced skills that are, you know, it's leadership is still leadership, but what's the stuff that's different? It's the kind of stuff that's been showing up here in the chat, right? So we can make a long list and I'm just going to start here and say like the skills of, uh, for us to build relationships are different uh, working relationships, the communication needs Tools, approaches are different. The, the necessity of expectations being clearer are different. The level of trust, which was just mentioned by Rob in the chat, is true. Those are just four. I could give you a lot more, but I thought I would let you all tell me. What are the other specific leadership skills that need to be adjusted or changed uh, as we're leading in this new world? Whoops. I'm hitting the wrong area here. Uh, yeah, so the, the stuff we need to know stuff about, the knowledge bases, right? 
need to be different. And guess what? Uh, also, it's not just the knowledge that we need to have, but how are we setting up and creating knowledge bases for our organization as people aren't necessarily right next to each other to share ideas, as we might have people who are leaving. Uh, and so some of that profound knowledge that we had in the organization might not have been captured. How do we capture that moving forward? How do we use technology to do that? How do we use relationships to do that? All of that being true. Anybody else have any specific things you would add here? The tools required. Yep. Uh, for sure. So do we have the right technologies? Are we using the technologies to meet, to meet the needs that we have, right? To Jeffrey's point. Um, prioritization of work helping people figure out which work is most important. I, I think, Laura, this is a really important one because absence does not necessarily make the heart grow fonder, and it also doesn't make the mind clearer, right? So uh, the need for us as leaders to help people stay on track and have the right work prioritized is even more important when we're not necessarily walking down a hallway uh, seeing a bunch of visual cues about where we're working and what's going on, right? We're not walking down a hallway. We're not seeing um, a monitor in the break room with the, with the dashboard on it uh, or the goals on it, those sorts of things. And so that's an important thing. Uh, coaching, uh, our need, our, the need for us to coach as leaders is heightened and we need to do it in different ways than we've done it before. It nuanced differences for sure right? Having check-ins, one-on-ones. And by the way, I love David to use the word check-ins, not checking up. Uh, so setting clearer expectations can help us do that. Abby, said, Abby says having inclusive behaviors, recognizing what those are for us, coaching others, expecting that of others, and uh, giving people space. I think we need to give people space psychologically. We need to give people space to do work. Uh, and that could that could look like lots of things for sure. Right. So we could make a long list. We could spend the rest of our time just building on this list. And it just reinforces the point that we're making that we haven't really figured out this new way of working or leading yet. Right. Chris says recognizing individuals preferred communication methods. One size did not does not always work. And yet uh, we don't lean into people's individual choices so much that we're no longer using the best tool to really solve the communication challenge either. So that's a yes and as well, which relates to where I'm headed on the next slide, which when I get there in a second, Patty says, compassion and empathy, detecting emotions through a virtual screen is harder. I think we would all agree with that. I wanna go back to Chris's point a second ago about uh, recognizing people's preferred approaches to communication, preferred technologies, yes, and that leads us, in my mind, to this idea of, if I can get my slides to move, everybody, there we go, uh, the flexible approach. That the future of work re will require us as leaders to be more flexible, that there's not a single, there's going to there's gonna be less often a single right answer, but rather uh, the, the thinking needs to not be anything other than both and. We need to be thinking both and. Well, how, how about this and this? How do we hook those two things together? Being able to adjust, being able to flex, being able to think beyond our style and saying, well, this is the kind of leader I am, so you guys are gonna have to figure it out because that's who I am, but rather say, well, who, where, where is everyone else and how do I adapt and adjust to them? How do we continue to adapt and adjust to the situation and the context? And how do we put that all together so we're getting the results that we want and need? And of course, we certainly have in our world today a level of polarization on a variety of topics. And as leaders, we have to get our teams above that, right? We have to, we have to help our teams be ultimately successful even in a world that might be more divisive. How do we create that place of connection so that even if the world is divisive, we can be cohesive to get the work done that we want to get done. Uh, I, I've come to believe this, and I'll put this up and then I'll shut up for a second. The test of an effective leader is the ability to hold to two 
opposed ideas in mind and apply each when needed. I believe that this will be a hallmark skill for leaders in the future. And if we can, and, and I guarantee to our earlier conversation about mindset, like if a leader doesn't believe this or understand this, there's very little chance that they can do this or will even want to do this. And I believe this will be a hallmark of the future of great leaders. Uh, so here's the thing. The future is complex, for sure, somewhat unknown, not quite as locked in as these walls in this picture that AI made for me. Uh, and being a leader is complex. So not only is the future complex, leading was already complex, but in this future, it becomes more so. Okay. So uh, before I go on, again, any questions, comments, observations, anything else before we go on? I'm being able to bring the team along on this concept of flexibility. Thank you, Cindy. It's important on being intentional and creating space and time to connect and build rapport with all team members. Like that word intentional, Wayne and I have been talking about for a long time in relationship to if we're leading people that are not in physical, physical proximity with each other, that we have to be more intentional. We have to be more aware. And we also have to be more aware that we want our, our intention to be seen, which isn't always true either. So it's one thing for us to be intentional. It's another thing for people to see it in a way that helps them recognize value that, which helps us to build trust. So any other co comments, thoughts, questions before we move on? Anybody? Well, I promised that one of the things that I would do was give you some very specific and tangible things that you could leave with. And that's what starts on the next slide. So we've talked about mindset. We've talked about skill set. Let's talk about habit set. What are some specific things that you could do right now as a leader? And I think that not knowing where all of you are exactly, where your organizations are, I can still say without question that if you do this first thing, uh, it will add value right away. And you won't do it unless you do it intentionally to Debbie's point. Here it is. Do what I call a listening tour. Now, doing a listening tour is something that I have recommended to, to new leaders in a role for a long time. But I'm coming to be to the point where I think we all ought to be doing it more regularly. And here's what I mean by a listening tour. I'm going to go to all the members of my team. I'm going to ask them how it's going. I'm going to ask them for their input. I'm going to get ideas from them on stuff like this. And I'm just going to ask them what they think. How are things going? What could we be doing differently? It, if we're ha if if on the days we're in the office, all we're doing is having virtual meetings, that'll come up. And we ought to figure out how to do that differently as an example, right? Daniel says it's an after, act, after action review. And um, I, I sometimes call it a learning look back. And usually these kinds of things are done after a major project of some sort, right? Uh, I like to ask how it's going, then shut up and listen. That's why I call it a listening tour. Like your intention is to go around and just get everyone's insights. Even if their insights match up with yours, it is not even, it is not even appropriate for you to say, I agree. Just like, listen. What's working from their perspective? What are they seeing working that maybe we're not all doing or we're not doing often enough uh, in terms of how we're, uh, our, in terms of our relationships, in terms of our meetings, in terms of our overall communication, including which technologies we're using when, how frequently we're interacting, what we're doing on the days we're in the office, if we are, versus the days we're not. Are we doing the things that are allowing us to build trust in the organization? So you're not just asking for personal feedback, although you may get some. You're asking for people to reflect on the work of the group. How are we doing? What are we doing? How could we do it better? What's happening with our team culture? What about our work processes? Do we have work processes we need to be adjusting given the fact that the work is adjusting? Right? What about our mental health and mental fitness? What are we doing to support each other in that regard? 
And so you do the listening tour and you ask people about these kinds of things and you take notes and don't talk. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. And then you got to take some action on that, right? There may be some overall things you're going to do as a group, as a result, you may have some more group conversation about this. And then you need to, <laughs> excuse me, update expectations. Well, those are ex expectations of the team of how we're going to work together. Thank you, Marlene. Or uh, the individual expectations that you might have with individual members of your team. Oh, by the way, Simply doing one and two is going to help you build trust and likely going to help you build relationships with in your role um, with those individuals. Uh, but the outcome of this then is to update your expectations, re-clarify them. There may be some things that come out of these conversations where like, this is what I was already hoping for, but we weren't getting. So it's so updating could mean changing, could be uh, resurfacing, could be clarifying expectations. And then keep learning. The process of doing the listening tour is in fact a learning exercise. And yet chances are out of all that, as an individual leader, you'll figure out what there's still, there's some gaps for me. What do I need to do? Adam says three is important. So many do one and two then stop. And I would say, Adam, that enough people, not enough people do one and two, but they certainly don't, they aren't necessarily doing three. So even if you're, we're doing one and two, we got there's got to be a, a a now what from that what are we going to do as a result and if we don't do that then the it's just like the after action review from a project we have this conversation don't change anything about how we run the next project what was the point in fact it's almost worse than if we hadn't asked so uh and absolutely anytime uh daniel said three should include to do to document and to me any any conversation about expectations has to be documented, right? Because what we're after is mutually and clearly mutually understood expectations, which means they probably got to be written down uh, as a part of that process. And the point of updating our expectation as leaders, yes. So it's not only the expectations of the group, the expectations that... Uh, we have of the team, but expectations run both directions. So we may be learning stuff in two, uh, in one and two that help us see that uh, they're looking for something from us that we didn't realize or that we're not delivering. And so we have to step back and make sure we're doing that 100%, 100% correct. Okay. So, uh, so the question then is how do we get there? And we get there one step at a time. You see these two uh, uh, these people that are walking that we get there by taking one step at a time. And obviously here, we've just given you some specific steps that you could take, but how do we get there, especially as it relates to number four? I'm going to give you a couple of things that you can do related to number four there to keep learning. Um, and, and so a couple of specific things that we can do to help. I think you're going to be really excited by these things. So here, hang on, here we go. The first thing is there's this brand new book. I just met, we mentioned earlier, here it is. Here's physical copies. The book isn't a physically available yet. Um, it will be available on September the 17th, but you can get your copy now. And you can get your copy now by going to Amazon. You will find it there. Marlene has put it in the chat as well. KevinEikenberry.com slash LDL. It just will, will send you to that Amazon link where you can get a copy. Now, here's the thing about pre-ordering a book. A couple things. Number one is it guarantees you'll be the first among the first to get it. The other thing, if you buy it from Amazon, it also guarantees that if the price drops, you'll be you'll get the best possible price. So right now it's listed at the list price of $24.99. Doesn't necessarily mean that's what you'll pay when the time comes. So there you go. Uh, so if you if you already have a copy, we talked a little bit about that. If you had a copy of the, the first book, uh, recognize that it's about 25 to 30% new content. And even in the chapters that are, we're, we're already there. All of it has been uh, reconsidered in the context of the new world or continuing to change world of work. So this is one, one thing that you can do that we can help you with, right? So if you've got leaders, you or leaders in your organization that are looking to get better, uh, we believe that this is a handbook that can help them get there, okay? We have something else for you though. And you're gonna love this if you're not aware of this. It's what we call virtual leader con that we started doing during the pandemic. 
And here's the thing, and I'll say more about what Virtual Leader Con is in just a second. Um, the the pre-conference is on the 17th of September, which you might notice is the same day that the book releases. Uh, not on, that's on purpose. Actually, it's not a coincidence. Uh, and so the pre-conference day of Virtual Leader Con, more on what Virtual Leader Con is in a second, is all about the kind of stuff we've talked about today. Very specifically about the future of work, distributed work, hybrid work, what's the role of the leader in all that stuff. Like it's going to be very focused on that thing. We're going to have Wayne and I will be joined by three um, thought leader experts to help us with various things on that on the 17th, on the 18th and 19th. For the, for the main conference, uh, we'll be dealing with a whole variety of leadership and personal development skills. There's the link more about what this is in just a second. But the other thing I want to say is that every year that we've done this, I, as the facilitator, have a, a set of specific questions I ask all of our guests. And this year, the specific questions I'm going to ask in relationship to their, their expertise uh, is going to be related to the stuff we've just been talking about. Like, how does all this change? How is it changing? What's it? What do you think it's going to look like? And how do we lean into the skills you're helping us learn in the future? So if you don't know what Virtual Leader Con is, here's what it is. Um, it is curated thought leaders. So we have the good fortune of knowing lots of folks uh, through doing our podcast, from doing past Virtual Leader Cons, from just people that are in our sphere that we know that are really really smart right and so there's lots of free content about leadership in the inter on the internet but nothing like this in that it's curated uh so we have carefully selected the people that will jo be joining us and it's live and interactive now they're also well i can go to a live thing um and even this is live but I can tell you that the platform we use for Virtual LeaderCon allows for way more interaction, way more sharing, and way more learning from each other. And so, yes, uh, on a situation like this, if you have a question, you can you can ask me, and I'm, I'm gonna probably trying I'm gonna do my best to give you an answer. But I can tell you that the way both the platform and the approach that we take to Virtual LeaderCon is very interactive, not only with the getting your questions answered of the experts, but also to learn from each other. And it's very focused on your needs because we have a whole variety of topics over the course of the session. And of course, there's, for the first time ever, we have a pre-conference separate from the rest of the conference. And if you didn't already know, look at the second to the bottom bullet, it's free. And again, I know there's lots of free content on the internet for leaders and for personal professional development, but what it, it doesn't have are those first four bullets. And those first four bullets are critical to what makes Virtual LeaderCon different from anything else that you might do going out and doing a search and go and watching and listen to stuff. And some of you may go out and watch and listen to our stuff, which we love you doing. And, and, and that's not bad. It's just different than this. And we're going to talk about this both for you as an individual, as well as for groups. So let's talk about this for a second. Here's the way this works. Like I said, you can go sign up at virtualleadercon.com and it's free. Like you can attend all of it live for two and a half days, 20 ish experts from around the world and uh, thought leaders and all for free. But if you want access to the content afterwards in terms of on demand, the transcript, uh, the recording, and perhaps other stuff that we will provide from the different experts, uh, you can get that for the pre-conference day for $35. Or you can get that for the whole thing for $95. So let's be clear. It's completely free to watch it, to participate in it live. But if you want to have the recordings or if you're going to miss stuff uh, for those very small investments, you can have access to it forever. Okay, now, um, I'm really not done here because there's a way for you to get that $35 reduced. Like if you go buy your copy of The Long Distance Leader... Uh, and if you go to virtualleadercon.com slash pre-order, it will tell you, um, yeah, I'm going to talk more about that in just a second, Wayne. So if you go pre-order your copy of the book we're, and you tell us by following the process at virtualleadercon.com slash pre-order, uh, you'll get all of that lifetime access to the pre-conference day for nothing. So buy the book, you're going to buy the book anyway, and then you get the pre-conference 
recordings, transcripts, et cetera, for free. Okay. So that's the basic gist, right? So I say, come one, come all. So the reason I say that is that there's reasons for you to come for yourself. Like if you came here with this hat on of, I want to be a better leader in the future, then if you come to virtual leader con, you're going to get personal development. You're going to get career development. You're going to get, you're going to get some, uh, chance to work on very specific things that you want to work on, pick the parts in the agenda that meet, meet your needs, work on those things. You get your confidence and your effectiveness will grow. Right. But this isn't just about for you individually. Many of you came here thinking organizationally. So if you think about this from an organizational perspective, you saw what you may have seen Wayne in the chat mention that you can pick a session, like pick a session on the agenda for a bunch of your leaders to attend together and you don't have to come to it all. And it's not going to cost you anything. Just have everybody come to that one session uh, and then have further discussion, conversation about it. You can, if you've got some leadership development programming, you can integrate this into it. Uh, if you're getting ready to start something, if you're in the middle of something, you could add this in. You could pick a thing, a piece to do. That's for sure. Uh, you can invite all your leaders in your organization, encourage them to attend. You can talk to us about licensing, all of that recorded material to put on your LMS or in some other way, whether it's all of it or for a specific session, all of that stuff is on the table. Um, so whether you're thinking about this for yourself or organization, uh, organizationally, this is of great value. And uh, Abby said some really, saying some really nice things in the chat about my, my, my point earlier about, about the learning from each other piece. Um, so, Here's how you get started. Uh, you can go to virtualleadercon.com slash agenda, and you can get to all these by just going to virtual leader con. Like, let's be clear. Uh, and you can see the agenda to say, hey, is there anything here I want for me? I should sign up for free and then put those particular sessions on my calendar. Pretty straightforward. Uh, is there anything that's really matching up with something we need in our organization for our leaders, either on a specific skill or on sort of that personal proficiency idea that we talked about earlier. Um, you can see that from the agenda and then you can go from there. Um, then of course, from virtualleadercon.com or on that link specifically, you can get yourself registered. And again, 100% for free. Uh, and remember, if you're ordering copies of The Long Distance Leader, you can pre-order those today, guaranteeing you the best possible price and uh, getting the on-demand access to all of the pre-conference stuff as well, if you follow that set of processes there. And, and you can just share this broadly with your folks. And so that's what you can do. And if you have questions about any of this, um, you can reach, if, you, if you're if you here and you know who your contact is in our organization, reach out to them. If you wanna think about how you can best leverage this in your organization, if you've got specific questions, they can help you think about that. Or um, if you, you can put your email in the chat right now, we'll make sure that we get back to you, or you can send an email to Jill. And she'll make sure that the right person gets back with you because however you do that, you'll get then you'll get an email from us, right? So we do that. That's what will happen. So you came here thinking about developing your leaders. Thank you, Kelly. Um, you came here thinking about developing your leaders, whether it's yourself or, or others. And we talked about a number of these things in the last 58 minutes. We talked about improving our business results talked about increasing our productivity, reducing turnover, increasing, increasing, increasing retention, developing our teams, building culture. There's lots of reasons why we think about developing our leaders and developing ourselves. And I would say, if you think that's true, if any of these are true for you, which I believe they probably all are, then the time is to take now is to take some action. And we've just given you some very simple ways to do it. And I guarantee you, you're not going to find a, an easier way to help develop your leaders, a more targeted way to help develop your leaders. And you're not gonna find a better price, right? Because attending it live costs you the big zero. And, and, and I would like to say that, hope that you would also say that you're not gonna have uh, an organization that's as interested in helping you be successful as us in that regard as well. That our goal is 100 
percent about helping leaders grow, be more successful, uh, help their organizations grow and be more successful. And we started doing virtual leader con during the pandemic because no one was getting these kinds of opportunities. And so we continue to do it because we get the kind of feedback that says it's of use and of value to leaders and organizations. And it's our focus this year to not just get individual leaders to be there, but to really encourage organizations to send groups of leaders in the kinds of ways for the kinds of reasons we've talked about today. So hopefully you found this useful and I will simply end by now's the time and why would you wait? And I would just say this, if you're saying, hey, this is really good. If nothing else, go sign up for yourself right now. You may be thinking about all this other stuff that you wanna do uh, for your organization. Just get yourself registered. And if you start there, the rest can go from there. Uh, Wayne says, we'd love to see you and your folks at VLC. I agree with him. And with that, everybody, I wish you a wonderful day. I hope that we will see you, as a number of you in the chat have already said, that we will see you at VLC. And the way to do that is to start is just go to virtualleadercon.com. Get yourself signed up. People are getting signed up now. I'm going to let you all go. Have a great day, everybody. Please let us know how we can assist you and one of the ways we can start with VirtualLeaderCon. Thanks, everybody.